Hi everyone, I'm Rinsey and I am one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. So I really like food, <laughs> which sounds really insane, but I feel like I really love food. Like I jokingly always say that food is my love language, even though I'm kind of also not joking. I like eating it, I like cooking it, I like sharing it with other people, um, and I enjoy reading about it. So I thought that today I would talk about four different nonfiction books that deal with food in different ways. It kind of comes at it from a bunch of different angles. I have a bunch of different types of nonfiction books here, so hopefully there will be one that appeals to you. So the first one I have is A History of the World in Six Glasses by Tom Standage. This was probably one of my earliest experiences with reading food nonfiction and I was really just intrigued by the premise of this book. What it does is it looks at the history of the world in six classes. The title is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> um, but the six different beverages that they look at are beer, wine, spirits, coffee, tea, and cola or pop or whatever you want to say it, call it. I call it pop. It's a really interesting way to look at the history of the world. Obviously it doesn't look at the broad history of the world, but it sort of looks at these very specific moments in time uh, when these beverages were either being developed or were gaining popularity um, or both. And I think it puts the world and world history in a really just interesting perspective. And it's definitely one of those nonfiction books where it will give you a ton of really fun facts that you will want to share with the people around you. This is I think a really great one to pick up because it's a really fun book and it talks about things that a lot of us are already really familiar with but we may not be familiar with the history of it or if you're just a fan of like micro histories in general this would be a good one to pick up. The next one that I have is Relish by Lucy Nicely and this is actually a graphic memoir. The subtitle to this is My Life in the Kitchen and what Lucy Nicely does in this book is she looks at her own personal history with food and cooking and how that has changed over time. This is probably my favorite favorite Lucy Nisley book. There are a couple I still haven't read yet, but so far nothing has really topped this one. And part of me thinks it's because it's about food. <laughs> this one is also like mostly in color, which is really nice because it doesn't always come that way. But the thing I really like about this one is that she includes recipes in here. So here she has a recipe for spiced tea and then she has a recipe here for what she calls are the best chocolate chip cookies and I've actually like bookmarked this one because I've used it on multiple occasions and every time I make these chocolate chip cookies I always get complimented on them. So yeah even if you just need a good chocolate chip cookie recipe this is a good book to pick up. But yeah I really like Lucy Nisley's writing style. Um, it's a really interesting way to look at your own sort of personal history of cooking and food and I feel like Lucy Nisley's writing style is just really relatable and delightful. So yeah, highly, highly recommend this one. This is probably one of my favorite graphic memoirs that I've read. The next one that I have is a book that I recently finished and that is Hunger by Roxanne Gay. Um, this is subtitled A Memoir of My Body and this is an essay collection and nonfiction book where Roxanne Gay talks about her own experience with food and her body and it's amazing. It's so good. I really like Roxanne Gay's writing style and specifically her nonfiction always really, really works for me. She's very open and honest and frank about her own relationship with food and her body. She also talks about about how she was raped uh, when she was a kid and how that also impacted her relationship with food and her body. Um, she talks a lot about the way that people in society view food and bodies and her own just struggles of being a bigger woman in this world and her own struggles of wanting to be healthy but also wanting to say like F you to the patriarchy and what's expected to, of her as a woman. It's really really beautifully written. Um, the chapters are relatively short. I, I flew through this one and yeah I think it's a really interesting way of just looking at food and the way that we as a society or at least a western society uh, view food food, how there are like good foods and bad foods and how she does or doesn't have healthy relationships with these different things. I found a lot of these passages to just be really honest and real in a way that I don't really see very often when it comes to food and cooking and self-love and the way that again we view our own bodies. If you haven't picked up this one already I highly recommend doing so. Um, I don't know anyone who's read this book and hasn't enjoyed it but I feel like this is a topic that a lot of people especially women can really relate to because we're told very specific things about again food and bodies and what we should look like and how we should react to those things and I think that Roxane Gay does a really great job of just shining a light on that and recognizing the sort of paradoxical position that we're often put in or feeling. It's great. It's so good. 
highly recommend it. And the final book that I have is one that I haven't read yet, but I've been hearing really great things about, and that is The Cooking Gene by Michael W. Twitty. Um, the subtitle to this is A Journey Through African American Culinary History in the Old South. So I've only read like the first couple of pages of this. I haven't even gotten through the first full chapter yet uh, about what Michael W. Twitty is doing here. He's looking at his own sort of heritage and the cooking styles that were adopted by Black people who grew up in the South and were forced into certain sort of like cooking they traditions and how African-American, again, culinary history sort of grew and evolved in the South. At least towards the beginning of the book, a lot of what he's doing is trying to recreate the meals and the cooking styles that his ancestors would have had. He also talks a lot about, obviously, slavery and its impact that it had on food and the way that Black people cook here in the United States. Um, but again, I'm only a couple of pages into this one, so I can't give like a full scope of what it will cover. But I've heard really, really good things about this one and that it's sort of like a mixing of both food history here in the United States as well as uh, Michael W. Twitty's own personal history. So yeah, those are all of the books that I want to highlight for you guys. I'll leave a comment down below letting me know if you've read any of these books or if there are any other food books out there that you've really enjoyed. There are so many. I feel like there are constantly always like food memoirs and food nonfiction books being released every year and so I know that there are a bunch out there that I haven't read yet. Um, so feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorites are. So yeah, that's all I have for this week and I will see you guys next week. Bye!